Good morning, and welcome to Central Christian Church. Whether you're joining us here in person or online this morning, we are glad you are here, and we hope that God touches your heart and your spirit in a special way this morning. Um, there are a few announcements. First off, you'll notice I'm not Cameo. So you might have been confused by that for a moment, but Cameo is out of town, so we pray for her um, this weekend, and we uh, hope she has safe travels back home. Um, as far as announcements this morning, there are no donors for the flowers today, but if you would like to sponsor the flowers for this summer, make sure you either sign up on the sheet or let Pamela in the office know. It's always fun to have flesh, fresh, beautiful flowers. Um, also, you can sign up to help with the welcome table. If you've been wanting to bring cookies or finger sandwiches or something, please sign up to help. Um, inside your bulletin, you'll notice there is an insert called Nominations for Leadership, and on the back are the um, requirements or prerequisites for nominating someone. Feel free to nominate yourself if you've always wished you were one of these positions. If you nominate someone else, please ask them before you nominate them. No one likes to be surprised that they are now an officer when they had no idea. So please um, ask before you nominate, and nominations are open through tomorrow. Um, then also on Tuesdays at 11.30, there's brown bag lunch. You can come for the fellowship time, and sometimes you may even be able to help with a task or two. So we hope you'll join us on Tuesdays at 11.30. Also, if you haven't yet, King Supers, you get a 5% reward on your purchases if you sign up. And you can, it's real easy to sign up, and then that just keeps on going every time you shop. So if you need more information, please let Pamela or myself know, and we can help you get signed up. And then the last announcement I have is that we will soon be holding a membership class. It'll be early this summer. So if you have been wondering about membership or you're a new member and would like more information, um, be looking for that date that will happen on a Sunday during the Sunday school hour and we'll be announcing that soon. So I believe those are the announcements that I have for this morning. I would like to invite our worship team forward so we can start singing our hymns to Christ. Our first hymn today is if everyone could stand as we are able as we sing together. Um, Come Christians Join to Sing, which is page 90 in the hymnals, or on the, on the screen. Come Christians Join to Sing, Alleluia. Let us pray. 
God of love and laughter. We come into your presence this morning and we give you all thanks and praise for another beautiful Colorado morning. God, we ask that you shine your spirit into our lives and that you remove those things that keep us distracted, that keep us separate from you, O Lord. We ask that you open our eyes and open our hearts and open our minds to hear where you are calling us this day, to see where you would have us go. God, be known to us in this act of worship, and may all we do say, sing, and think be pleasing unto you now and forevermore. Amen and amen. You may be seated, and I'd like to invite Eden up for our scripture reading. Psalms 31, 1 through 5. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. You are my refuge. In your hand, your into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Good morning, guys. Good job reading, Eden. That was really good. So, are you guys glad that spring is finally here? Yeah, me too. So, sometimes springtime is really busy. So, that's certainly how, how we feel sometimes. You guys ever feel busy this time of year? I know you have tests. We have graduation. The older kids have prom. We have a lot of stuff going on, don't we? So, so what happens when we're, we kind of feel stressed out or extra busy? Grumpy, right? Yeah, that happens to us sometimes. So sometimes we get, sometimes we get a little, little grumpy when we're stressed out. We have a lot going on. But what things, um, what things do we do to help ourselves from, from being grumpy to kind of get us out of that funk? We can do more fun things. Yeah, that's right. We can distract ourselves a little bit. That's really good. Anything else that you guys can think of? Vivian said she likes to go to sleep. More, more distractions, right? So, so yeah, that's so. So those are things that I, sometimes you can listen to music, and those are things that I I do too sometimes. But um, it, it doesn't always work. So sometimes we forget to um, to ask God to help us, right? So like Eden read today, God is our rock and he's our fortress, right? So he helps us. He doesn't stop bad things from happening, but he's there to protect us when they do. So fortress is an interesting, interesting word. Do you guys know what a fortress is? It's like a big, uh, like a building, I guess. That's like kind of like a castle. Yeah, a castle's a castle's exactly right. So what do you think, Evan? Can you guys think of any fortresses? No? <laughs> okay. So Cece and I just watched the Mario movie, and and there's uh, you guys do you guys like the Mario movie? Have you seen that? So at least the previews. Yeah, it's it's pretty good, but there's a big fortress in that Bowser's castle. There he has a lot of he has a lot of lava and a drawbridge and big tall walls, right? So that's something that that I thought of when I was thinking of a fortress and we can pray to God to help us 
right, to be our fortress, because we know that even though we have a fortress, it doesn't stop bad things from happening, right? But it does, it does help protect us when they do. So, right? So, so that's something that we can do, not just think about it on our own, but also, also pray to God um, to be our rock and, and our castle, right? Okay, let's have a prayer. Um, dear God, thank you for these children, and thank you for your message um, that we can't always do things on our own. We know that bad things do happen, but um, we know that you're there for us, and you are a rock and uh, in our fortress. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our next song is number 84 in the praise book, Take My Life. It is also on the sing screen. Amen. Take my mind, my heart, and my will. Sounds just about right. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, there are some joys and concerns I definitely want to lift up that we can put on our heart. Top on my heart and mine this morning is Patty and Pete um, R. Patty took a fall yesterday at the Jeffco Stadium. She was being a good grandma and fell on the bleachers and got a serious um, surface wound to her leg and she's going to have to be off her feet for at least a couple weeks and so um, I hear they came by this morning to grab a wheelchair 
And so we need to be praying for Patty and Pete because um, if you are in a relationship, you know when one is down, we're all down. So um, prayers for Patty and Pete during this time. Um, we also pray for Kedra's family has a lot going on and we lift them up in our prayers. Last week I mentioned that Noah and their dog um, were attacked in the neighborhood, so we continue to pray for both Noah and the dog's healing. Um, we pray for Dick and Joe. We pray for Paul and Marilyn who are unable to be here today. Um, we also pray for, maybe this is just kind of personal in my own life, but this is the season of proms and graduations around Denver and around the world right now. And I think it's because I was raised by a police officer who talked about proms and be graduations being um, such a scary time of year, but I pray for all the young people that are out celebrating and excited and pray they all make good and smart and wise decisions. Um, along with prom and graduation comes end of school, and so we pray for all our children um, that are wrapping up the school year and getting ready for the summer. I pray for the teachers um, who are trying to hold on to sanity for the last few weeks of school, and I pray for the families um, because summer can be a big change for a lot of families and their routines. So we're wrapping it up another year. Um, and that brings me to celebrations. A big celebration is Jonathan is graduating this Friday, correct? And so we celebrate. <laughs> graduating from college doesn't just happen. I know it takes a lot of hard work and dedication, so we are praying with and for you, and we celebrate with you and with your family. What an accomplishment. I hope you have a wonderful last week as a college student. Um, and then another celebration is I got to talk to Ruth on Friday night, and she's having um, some progress with her health, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So we continue to pray for Ruth and celebrate um, her strides in health. And Jim, we continue to pray for you and your journey. So I hope this week you got some work done. So I'll catch up with you after church. But those are the prayer concerns I know of, but I know that there are hundreds and hundreds more that are on each of our hearts that we keep um, silent, but that God and the Holy Spirit hear. And so let us now, oh yeah, Charlene? All right, so we will pray for you and your travels. Um, Charlene will be going out of town for work, and so we will pray for you and safe travels for you and your company. Are there other prayer concerns or celebrations? Slip? Yeah, Julia? That's right. That's right. Well, we definitely pray for you, too. You're taking kind of a long trip, so prayers for you and your travels. Um, are there others? This is a traveling season. We're all gearing up to travel. Um, so definitely Godspeed and, and Margie, welcome back. We're glad you made it home safely from your travels. So let us now turn our hearts and mind to God for a word of prayer. Most holy and gracious God, we come into your presence this morning, O Lord, and we give you all thanks and praise. For we know that all good things come from you, O Lord, and we are so incredibly grateful for the spirit that continues to pour into our lives and continues to give us strength and courage for the days ahead. God, there are so many things that weigh so heavy on our hearts and minds, so many things in our world that bring us fear and concern, worry. God, we ask that you be with each of us, and not just those gathered here in this place, not just those watching online, O oh Lord, but be with each of us, all your children of the world, that we may each feel of your good news, of your grace and your love, even in the scariest and darkest of places. God, we lift up this day, Patty and Pete. We ask that you be with Patty during this time of healing. You are the divine healer, O Lord, and we lift her up in your precious name. We also remember this day, Dick and Ruth and Paul and Marilyn, 
we remember Joyce, and we ask that you be with those who are unable to be here today, that they may feel your Holy Spirit wherever they worship this day, and they may feel your feet walk alongside them each and every day. And God, we come to you not just in our time of concern and sorrow, but we get excited to, sell, to bring to you our joys and our celebrations. And oh God, how excited we are to celebrate with Jonathan and his family this huge accomplishment as he walks across the stage on Friday, a college graduate. God, thank you for pouring your spirit into his life and help him to continue to see the light you would have him travel. Open the doors he needs opened, O oh Lord, and be with him each and every step of the way. God, we remember this day all the tragedy in our world. We remember those who are hurting and homeless. We remember those who our lives are torn apart by war and by violence. God, be known in the scariest places. Be known in the darkest of times. God, we lift you up in praise and we thank you for calling us by name, for preparing a place for us, for forgiving us when we mess up, and for holding us when we hurt. God, we know you are always with us when we take the time to see you and even when we put a blind eye to your call on our lives. God, remove our burdens, remove our worries that we may follow you more closely. Give us the confidence to be your hands and feet in this world and give us the grace to forgive others and ourselves when we let you down. God, we love you and we can't wait to serve you and to see how you will show up in our lives this week. Help us not miss it, O Lord, and help us to be love in the life of others. And lead us, O God, in the prayer that your Son taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite the choir ensemble forward.
I heard someone once say, we come to church for communion, but we stay for the music. And I think, I think that just might be right. That was beautiful. Thank you, choir. Our, our second scripture for this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, 1 through 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's home, house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may also be. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. Henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we shall be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you do not know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Truly I say to you, he who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do because I go to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Here ends the reading of God's holy word according to John. Thanks be to God. Amen. So have you ever come to church and as, and I don't mean me, Jason, for some reason, this won't go back. Can you, they, can you, thank you. Okay, thank you. It might be. Yes, now it is. Sorry about that. Um, but have you ever come to church, and I'm not speaking in the last few weeks, but throughout your lifetime, and as you're at church, you think, did the pastor follow me around this week? Because it feels like that sermon was for me. That's how I feel about this scripture. So I think that this scripture, if nothing else, proves to me that God has a sense of humor um, because we follow the Revised Common Lectionary in our church, which means the calendar kind of lays it out for us, and we just pick the scriptures for that Sunday. And these are the scriptures for this Sunday. And this is the scripture, one of the scriptures I used in Canaan's memorial service. And so I have to say, when I was picking the scriptures, I thought, well, let's just pick something different. There's got to be something different. And so I kept reading them, and they all came back to this theme. So I decided today's sermon is for me. And you guys are welcome to be here and hear it. That's, that's kind of what it feels like God has done today. So I take today to be God saying, I speak to you as much as I speak to them. And so here we go. Today's scripture, this line at the beginning, I think is one of the most well-known lines, I think, of scripture. The let not your hearts be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. If you've been to basically any memorial service, you have probably heard this scripture read. We think of this scripture as kind of the burial scripture. You know, in my father's house, there are many rooms. You know, I go before you to prepare a place. We think of these words as being funeral words. Do we not? Have, has anyone heard these before at a funeral? Yeah. They're, it's like one of the most popular words to hear at a funeral. And I don't want to discount how meaningful these words are at the end of life because I, they bring great comfort. They bring me great 
comfort. I love to think that Jesus is up there preparing a room for me right now as I'm speaking to you. That thought brings me great comfort. But I think these words go even deeper. I think they speak to us in our day-to-day living. Yes, they speak about eternal life. They remind us that Jesus indeed goes before us, that Jesus knows suffering, that Jesus loves us so very much that Jesus goes ahead of us and prepares a place, but then loves us so much he comes back to usher us to that place. And so this thought of eternal life, these words bring us great comfort. These words have never meant more to me than they do now. To think that Jesus is there with Canaan preparing a place for me sounds wonderful. And yet I think that these words speak to us now, now in our living right now. Because you see, it doesn't say, in the future, don't worry about your hearts being troubled, right? It starts right at the beginning. Let not your hearts be troubled. Where is this coming from? This story, this scripture comes immediately following the Passover meal. It's an amazing thing what lectionary does. It jumps us all over the scriptures. But these very words that Jesus speaks is right after the Passover meal. He's just washed their feet. He's just shared that someone will betray him and Judas has left. He's just told Peter that he's going to be, that he's going to deny him. And I know these disciples had to be so confused about what's happening and about what's coming. And Jesus looks right into this fear that he knows, the fear he sees in their eyes. And he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me. Believe also in me. In God. Jesus comes into our real lives and knows the troubles we have. And Jesus speaks these very words into our lives. Don't let your hearts be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you. When I think of this preparing a place. I think of going to visit my family. Because if you go visit my family, my parents have a very small house. It's the same house I was born into. And my bedroom's still my bedroom, because as it should be. But my sister's room is now my dad's office, also as it should be. And so they bought a long time ago a futon for Ezekiel when he was three years old, so that when he came to visit, he always had his bed and it's still his bed so when we show up at my parents house whether it's eight o'clock in the evening which it typically is or 11 o'clock at night what we can be guaranteed is that my bed will be made Ezekiel's futon will be all made up with the perfect blanket and the pillows their milk will be in the refrigerator there'll be candy in the candy dish And what I know is that my parents will have spent a whole day or more preparing for our arrival. And maybe they'll be grumbling about, oh, we hate setting up this futon. But primarily what it is is it's excitement. It's excitement that we're coming home, that we're coming to visit. And I think about if that feels so good to me to go home, it's the same house I was born into, so it's truly going home. If it feels that comforting to me to go home and know that that place will have been prepared for us, how much more amazing is it to think that Jesus Christ is preparing a place, a dwelling place just for you and for me. It's pretty miraculous, really, because if you're like me, you've probably screwed up, maybe even screwed up this last week. Like, we don't even have to go back years and years for some of us to see our screw-ups. I can name about five I did this last week. I won't. You all can tell me what you saw I screwed up on. But to think that Jesus sees us, sees our hurts, sees our hearts, sees our failings, sees all the things, and still says, I love you so much that I go and prepare a place 
for you. And these dwelling places, we often think of eternity, right? Of heaven, that by and by, the mansion in the sky. But I think that this scripture, these dwelling places, talk to us here and now. When we have hurt, we go to the, our dwelling place where Christ meets us. When we have fear, we go to the dwelling place where Christ meets us. When we fall down and skin our knees and do it all wrong, we go to the dwelling place of Jesus Christ who greets us and holds us and loves us. So often we think of this dwelling places that Christ talks about as being something far away. But God and Jesus Christ lives in our hearts. God is ever present to us, nearer to us than our own breath. And so when we think we're in a place of despair and we feel all alone, we're not. We're already residing in Christ dwelling places. Jesus comes to us wherever we are on our journey of faith and sets with us in our real pain and says, do not be troubled. Believe in me. Believe also in my Father. This whole scripture is about relationships, that Jesus is with God and that God is with us, and there's nowhere we can go where we are separated from the dwelling places of God because God dwells in our heart. God dwells in our life. God dwells in our home. God dwells in our church. God dwells in our schools. God dwells on the playground and in traffic, even when it's driving us crazy. And so sometimes we think we're all alone or that we've been forgotten or that our troubles are way too big for God. God just means minuscule min troubles, not the big ones I carry. But this scripture reminds us that God is ever with us. That we're not just practicing for eternity, though we are. When we sing the hymns, when we show up to worship, when we pray for one another, when we sit with one another in our real hurts, our real fears, our real concerns, God is present in those dwelling places. And this doesn't guarantee this, this faith we have in Jesus Christ, this knowledge that God is with us. It does, it does not mean that life will be easy. It doesn't mean that we'll be free of trouble and free of worry and our bills will be paid and everyone we love will live forever and all the people who hate us will instantly love us. It doesn't mean any of that. What this means is no matter what life throws at us, and life will throw some mighty curveballs, no matter what life throws at us, Christ says, let not your hearts be troubled. Be concerned for a moment. Be worried for a little bit. But don't let your hearts stay in that troubled place. This scripture, it's a hard one. It brings back a lot of emotions and memories for a lot of us of setting in places and knowing it was the final earthly goodbye that we have with a loved one. But I think this scripture comes around in lectionary because in my mind, and this is according to me, Christ wants us to remember that it's not just eternity when God shows up and shows out in our life. This scripture reminds us that in all times and all seasons, God walks with us, that Jesus Christ knows us. He knows suffering. He knows fear. He knows betrayal. He knows heartbreak. He knows it all. And he says, if I know you, then God knows you. And I know you. The scripture reminds us that we are never alone and that Christ knows us and that God sees us and loves us 
and cherishes us and created us. And so if you're here today and you feel like, what's it even worth it? Or my troubles are so big, you don't even know what you're talking about. I want you to remember that it was on that night, that Passover night, when Jesus knew he would be betrayed. He knew he was going to the cross to suffer. He knew the world would turn their back on him. And what he said to the disciples gathered wasn't you terrible, rotten people. Instead, what he said was, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And Thomas and Philip in these scriptures, they speak for us, right? They're us. They say, but how can we know? How can we know where you're going? We can't see it with our own eyes. We don't know the path. How do we know? And Jesus says to us, you know God, and you know me. And more importantly, I know you, and I see you. So when we don't know where to turn, when we don't know what to do, when it feels too dark, too sad, too heavy, we turn to the way, the truth, and the life. We turn to Jesus and we say, we know you see our troubled hearts. Be known to me, just as you're known to the Father. These words are as true today as they were to the disciples in that upper room so long ago. Jesus comes into our very real lives, our messy, dirty, confusing sometimes incredibly sad lives, and says, do not let your hearts be troubled. I am with you always, and I go to prepare a place for you. And not only do I know you, but God knows you. And not only does Jesus love you, but God loves you. May it be so that these dwelling places of our lives, that every time we recognize we see God, that we open our hearts up to the one who goes before, the one who waits behind, and the one who holds our hand as we walk into that glorious forever by and by. May it be so today, tomorrow, and always. Let not your hearts be troubled for you are never alone. Amen. If there are others here that would like to know of this glory found in Jesus the Christ or would like to join with our church family, we invite you to come forward during the singing of our hymns, or you can talk with me after worship. Today we will be singing, Whom Shall I Fear, God of Angel Armies. is the victory. Whom 
Last Sunday, we had our 30 to 40 minute work day, and many of your hands contributed um, to the church. And I'll say it was wonderful um, to walk around, we'll pretend that was part of my work, um, and see the smiles, not just the work being done, but the smiles on people's faces, the conversations happening between people. And I believe that that is what makes God smile that when we join together and we work together for God's glory on this earth, I think there's very few things that God, make God happier. For our God is a God of relationship, as we said, as always by our side. Now is a time when we give back just a small portion of the many blessings in our life and we know that if it was up to just one of us to give um, we would be in big trouble but when we all join together with our time our talents our resources it's amazing what god can and will do in the life of our church and in the life of our world so won't you give generously give from the heart and know that god welcomes and blesses all gifts no gifts are too small for the glory of God. Let us join our voices together as we sing the doxology printed on the screen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity to give back just a portion of the many gifts you bring into our lives. God, we ask that you accept these gifts 
and that you use them and bless them to be bring healing into your world. God, we thank you for the many that gave today with time, talent, and treasure, and we ask that you bring a special blessing on each of our hearts this day and always. Amen. So this week um, was a fairly difficult week for me, and that is because on Tuesday was Canaan and I's 20th wedding anniversary, and you think that you're prepared. Um, you think that you've done all the things to be prepared, and then you wake up, and you're just not prepared. And I found the most difficult part of the day is he wasn't there. And so that was kind of frustrating to me. And so um, instead I decided I can't sit here in Waller. That doesn't help anybody. So instead the kids and I went out to dinner and we shared stories and um, came home and it was a joyful day. But during part of the day um, it felt really heavy. And so the Eden came home sick from school. I had told her it was our anniversary, and I, I think, honestly, and I'm going to tell the secret, I think she came home because she didn't want me to be home alone and sad. But she came home and spent the day with me. But before she got home, I was in the kitchen, and I was trying to unload the dishwasher, and I was very sad. I'm just going to be honest. And as I was unloading the dishwasher, I thought, it's not, what is even worth this? Like what, like why do I care about dishes? You know, why, you know, where's the joy? And I opened up the refrigerator because when I don't know what else to do, I eat. I don't think that's the healthy thing, but it's what I do. So I opened up the refrigerator to find a snack and instead what I found was one of our little communion cups. It was just sitting in my refrigerator. And I remember when Canaan brought them home, he'd brought home communion to take to Bob Dumbler. Um, right before Bob passed. And those two communion cups were still sitting in the refrigerator. And so I went to get something out of the refrigerator and my heart just kept being drawn back to those two cups. And so I thought, well, this may feel silly, but this is what I know to do. So I pulled out the two communion cups and I had communion with Canaan in my kitchen um, he did not drink his, which I think was rude. But we shared communion in the kitchen, and I felt God's presence. I felt God say, do not let your heart be troubled. We come to this communion table because our hearts ache. We know heartache. We know pain. We know loneliness, we know grief, we know betrayal. And we come to this table because there are times in life we don't know where else to go. But we know for certain that Christ has gone and prepared a place for us. And that God is waiting. I share that story to share with you that we come as we are fully and completely to this table of our Lord. We bring our hurts and our fears. We bring our doubts and insecurities. We bring our grief and our resentments. We bring them and we lay them down at the Lord's table. And we say, Christ, I know no what to do, but I know you do. I hope when you come to this table this day that you will fill Christ in a new and special way. I hope when you come to this table that you can release those things that weigh so heavy on your life. That you can come and know that indeed Christ meets you at this table. Christ has prepared a seat just for you because Christ loves you and knows you, and wants to dine and walk with you. Come to this table just as you are and know that you are loved by a God that cannot and will not let you go. Come and join with all the saints who have gone before. Come and taste and see 
that indeed the Lord is good, now and forever. Amen. Now, as we reflect on the time of communion, let us join together and sing We Come as Guests Invited, which is page 386 in the hymnal or on the screen. let us pray. pray. We are grateful for all the good things which come from you, O oh Lord, the freshness of the morning, the beauty of each new day, and life itself, which affords us the opportunity to partake of your spiritual blessings. May your spirit remind us that it is easy for us to partake of life's joys thought thoughtless. As we eat of this bread, which recalls for us your son's sacrificed love for all humanity, we come upon you for strength and courage as we give ourselves anew to the task of building your kingdom. Help us to, to measure both of your quantity and quality of our service. Give us the grace to assume cheerfully our just share of the responsibility of making this a better world. After this sample, after the example of the Christ in whose name we pray. O oh, loving God, we acknowledge that coming about this table is the central of act of worship for members of Christian Church. During this time, we feel within touching distance of you. As we take this cup, we pour it out and remember Jesus' shed blood. Our remembrance of him is repeatedly refreshed by this appeal to our sense of sight, touch, and taste. May it call us to remember the love of Christ who gave himself for us. We pray in the name of your son who died that all who believe in him might truly live. Amen.
she was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And after giving thanks, he blessed it and broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. Take in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he said, This cup is the covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's a new month, so we have a new closing hymn. So if you will stand as you are able, as our song leaders come forward for the month of May, we will be singing, We Are Walking. We are walking in the light of God. We are walking in the light of God. that doesn't make you smile I'm not sure what will so before you leave today I hope that you will join us for some fellowship time there's some cookies and treats out on the table again there's a lock box at the back make sure you drop off your offering as well as your nomination forms if you have some to drop off and let us go into the world walking in the light of God knowing that we are loved knowing that we are forgiven and know that we have been set free to be the hands of feet in God on this earth. May it be so now and forevermore. Amen.